Hello and welcome back to another episode of Isilon Quick Tips. Today we're going to talk about Sync IQ and we're going to go a little bit deeper than we have in the past with Sync IQ. So before it was all about just setting up a one-time replication, but now let's talk about some of the options and how we can really customize our Sync IQ jobs. So what we're going to do is I'm going to swing over to policies and I'm going to look at a policy I've already got created. And I'm just going to edit that policy. That policy is my home shares. And so this is all my corporate home directories here in Huntsville. And this is something that I'm replicating to my secondary cluster. So the first thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about some of the differences between copy and synchronization. Copy is just when you're specifically moving data from one directory to another directory. You're not caring about if the data has been deleted or if the data is merged. So when you're synchronizing, that's going to be different because synchronizing is actually going to keep your primary cluster and your secondary cluster in sync. So a file that has been moved to another directory inside of that directory will be replicated that way in your secondary cluster. And so will deletes. So if you have a file that's been deleted in your primary, once the sync job completes, it'll be deleted on your secondary cluster as well. Some of the areas you would use these is if you want to have a backup of your data but you don't really want to sync it, or maybe there's certain directories you want to pull out that you want to have all of those copied, that's typically when you're going to see them, but most cases you're going to use the synchronization. So in our run job, our run job is our option of when is this job going to run? So we want to sync, you know, this is our sync IQ policy, when's it going to kick off? So you have a couple different options. Uh, the one we did before was our manual, so that's just saying, hey, you know, I'm just going to manually push the button, and every time I do that, I'm going to sync my, I'm going to start that sync policy. Then you also have the option to do it on schedule. This is the most common one used. So this just says, hey, you know, two times a day, three times a day, you can set it up however you want, that you're going to set a schedule, that, you know, this data is going to be replicated, you know, let's say you do it at six in the morning or then six in the afternoon, you know, you can do it on a weekly, monthly, or yearly basis. Another common way to run these is whenever a source is modified. And so you can have a source that's modified. So, you know, think about if you move a file, if you delete a file, anything like that, any changes to that directory, it's going to go ahead and modify that source. You do have to set a time frame around that. So let's say that you modify a file, how fast you want that sync. So you can set a delay to happen a few different seconds, minutes, hours, or days. And so you can say, hey, you know, every time something's modified, let's wait a few minutes and then go ahead and have it replicated over. And then you can also have it set up where you know, whenever a snapshot of the source directory is taken, that's going to run that sync policy job too. Setting the source directory is very simple, right? So what directory are we wanting to move? In this case, I'm moving all my data that's in IFS as my source directory. The cool thing is, and where you can really customize this job, is not only we're setting it to different, different directories, but we also can include directories or exclude directories. So you can come in and say, hey, you know, all the directories under data, I'm only going to move over our Isilon support, or you know, I'm only going to move over my Izzy Gather perf. Or I can exclude directories. I can say, hey, you know what? Move everything that's in data, but these two directories here, Isilon support and Isilon gather, those are all administrative things that, you know, not really trying to replicate over. They're changing a lot. There's not any data in there that's not recoverable. Don't replicate those. So that just gives you a lot more control. So you can set, so you can set something at a high level in the tree and then only replicate the, the items that you want to in that tree and not have to worry about, okay, do I have to set up, you know, 15 different policies because I've got different data sets? No, you can still come back and set one or two policies to replicate over the data. And then we talk about some of these advanced settings. So you can actually set a priority on this and you can take it from, you know, a normal default policy or you can have, always have it that this specific policy is always going to be high level and that'll just make sure that that priority has been lifted on this job here. And also you can set a limit on how long you're going to keep the reports from these jobs because, you know, depending on how often these jobs are running, you'll start to have a lot of reports. And so you have that option there. So let's cancel out of this and I'm going to close out and I want to show you one more thing. So when we're talking about setting up those on modified, depending on how often those files change, that's how much bandwidth is going to go over your network. So if you have some performance concerns about how often or how much data is being throttled across, you can actually set a performance rule on these jobs. And so one of the cool things that I really like about it is you can set it on a schedule. So you can say, hey, you know, I really want to replicate this anytime my data is modified, but there are certain business hour times maybe or certain times of the, or certain days of the week that I really want to throttle it back and say, hey, you know what? It's not as big of a priority during this time. You know, the rest of the week, let's go ahead and have it, you know, open throttle there. 
And so you can set a schedule on that and you can even set some bandwidth rules around the limitations. And so you can kind of throttle it back saying, hey, you know, I always want to be modifying that data, but let's just set a performance rule about how much bandwidth can be taken up. And so that's just a deeper dive on Sync IQ. And so you can really see how you can customize and design those sync policies to fit whatever kind of rules that you want to have for replicating your data between your Isilon clusters. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I hope you'll join me for another episode of Isilon Quick Tips.